Now let's have a quick look at soldering. This is not supposed to be a huge tutorial or anything. I just wanted to quickly show those people who may be a little bit worried about this part of it that it's not difficult. There's not really that much to learn. Um, but I do hear people occasionally say that you know they didn't want to do this kind of thing because they were worried about soldering and it was going to be difficult or something. But it's not. It's not really. Um, if you can melt butter with a hot knife, well, then you can do soldering. Uh, you will need a soldering iron, of course. This is the one I use, and it's, uh, I think I paid about $60 for this, and it's worth every penny, but you don't need to spend that much on a soldering iron. Uh, before I got this one, I used one that cost about $20, and it was perfectly fine. But you will need one that has a fairly small tip, so this, this is just a ballpoint pen there, and you can see it's around about the same as that. So I wouldn't want to go too much larger than this sort of ballpoint pen size. So over here I have some solder, and solder is just a soft metal. It's actually a mix of two metals. It's lead, 60% uh, tin and 40% lead in this case. You can get varying percentages. And it has something inside it called rosin, which is, I think that comes from uh, some kind of a tree, tree sap or something, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe I should check that before I start talking about it. But the rosin helps the solder to flow nicely, so to melt it we just touch it on the soldering iron like that and you can <coughs> try not to breathe that in um, but you can see that it smoked for a little bit there and then it stopped smoking so I think what happened there was that that's the rosin inside the solder burns away and then all we're left with is the the metal see it's a little blob there uh, so that's there's no rosin in there anymore and we just heat that up and we put it on the thing that we want to put the solder on and you need to get both sides quite hot. So what I've just done there is going to be a bad solder join because I didn't get that very hot. So the solder is just going to sit on top rather than sort of forming one piece with that pad underneath it. So to get that on there properly, I'm just going to put this under here because it's going to get hot. And this pad, this mat underneath doesn't like getting hot. It sort of melts a bit. So to do this properly, I'm going to have to hold my soldering iron on there for a decent amount of time and there's not much solder on here and I also find that because there's no rosin on there anymore it just sort of goes into a kind of an annoying state where it's not very it doesn't flow very easily and when I lift the soldering iron off you can see it's, it goes into a point like that and that's kind of annoying, it's not really what we want. But, turns out that if we just dab a little bit of new solder or fresh solder on there and add a bit more of it, we get a sort of a more rounded, nice finish like that. And that's kind of what we're looking for. It's not really necessary, but that's a good sign that the solder joint that you made is a nice solid one and it's not going to break. Boy, it's hard to do this on camera. Uh, you can see that as I pump a little bit more fresh solder in there, we get a nice smooth finish. So even if there's enough metal on there, you may want to just dab a little bit more fresh solder on to get some of that rosin in there and help it to flow nicely. So we would do that on two sides of the thing that we want to join. And in this case, I'm going to put a little bit of wire on to these 5 volt and ground pads because I'm going to connect I'm going to use this to connect up to my flight controller with the ground and the 5 volts so let me just get that organized so here's the thing that I'm going to connect on there it's just one of those servo cables that I've cut in half and separated those wires and stripped a little bit off the end and I don't actually want this white one on here because that's not going to do anything useful for me so we can take that out of this plug by poking a knife or something sharp under that little plastic tab and pulling it out so that we're just left with the ground and 5 volts. And now if I just hold this in a pair of tweezers like that, to, just to keep it off the ground, I can put some solder onto each side of this wire as well. And whoa. Now this, this wire that I'm using here has just normal plastic shielding on it. So trouble is if you get this too hot, this plastic shielding will melt and you'll end up exposing more of the wire than you really wanted to so you've got to try and do it fairly quickly if you don't want to do that. Um, some of the other wire pieces that we're using have a silicon shielding on them 
and silicon, as you may know, doesn't uh, melt when it gets really hot, so those wires are much nicer to deal with. But anyway, now I have a little bit of solder on there, and we should see that it's a little bit shiny, hopefully. Um, so that's ready to be stuck to the other side. Um, well, my other side I haven't done yet, have I? Let me just do that. So I wanted to put it onto ground and 5 volts. So let's go there. There. Looking a little bit nicer. Okay, so those should be nice and shiny. Like I say, they don't need to be shiny, but it, it just sort of reinforces um, or just sort of proves that it's going to be a decent connection. So now I want ground on that one and 5 volts on that one. And both these sides already have nice fresh solder on them. So they should be nice and easy to connect together. Just, um, right, where are we? Boy, it's hard to do this on camera. So I'll just hold that on there and heat the top up until it sinks in. And you shouldn't need to um, heat it for very long because both sides are nice and fresh and ready to go. And this is probably something I should do with a pair of tweezers, so let me do that instead of burning my hands and embar embarrassing myself. There we go. Alright, so that is a nice connection for those two there. Actually, as soon as I say that soldering is easy, it turns out that one of the first things that we have to solder is actually a relatively tricky thing to do. Uh, it's not any more difficult than what I just showed you, it's just smaller and you have to be a little bit more steady handed. So on the flight controller board there's no pins on this one at the moment so we've got to put these pins on there. We don't have to but this is probably going to make things a lot easier to connect the other stuff up because they are made to plug into these pins. So let's put these pins on um, and you should find with the flight controller a bag of these things and you can choose whether you want to have the pins going straight up like that or if you want to have them bent at a 90 degree angle like that. I find that in almost every case that I've come across it's easier to have them going straight up like that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And the reason I say this is tricky is because there's a lot of pins all very close to each other. So that's why you need a fairly small pointed soldering iron to get in there and do it nicely. So the way I find it easiest to do these is to slot them in and then hold it with this pair of small tweezers. This tweezers is quite convenient because it fits in between those rows of pins like that and holds it nice and still. So what I usually do is I just tack a couple of these on at each corner you don't want to heat this up too much because there's little plastic bits on the other side that can melt. But basically once you've got one of those on you don't need the tweezers anymore. And especially once you put one at each corner like this. And you just want to hold the soldering iron there, on there a little bit to make sure that the solder has touched onto the the bottom part as well as just being on the pin. And this is really hard to do on camera. Good God. Okay, I think, I think I'll just leave it at that and uh, you get the idea. Admittedly, that is kind of tricky. <laughs> but when you're done, you should have something that looks a little bit like that. And the important point is that the solder is sticking to both the pin going through the hole and the little gold rim around the hole as well. So both of those points need to be connected well. That's really all there is to soldering. Um, so I don't know if that was really worth doing to be honest but um, hopefully maybe somebody out there saw that and they decided that soldering wasn't that hard after all.